Hello YouTube. Thanks for coming if you're new here. Thanks for coming back if you're a returning viewer. And thanks for being here either way. In this video, we're going to go over how to install the battery in the 2015 Evo 10 GSR. Not very many tools or a lot to this. Couple little quirks. Not a big deal to do. So, enough of me talking. Let's get to it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do here for changing the battery is going to be to pull on the clips here at the end, pop that loose, and take this out. Now with that out, we've exposed the 10 mil on the negative, the 10 mil on the battery retainer, and there's the one for the positive. I'll usually just leave that cover on it until I get this one completely off. Now, to make this a little bit easier, I'm also going to pull the mat here out and the tray out to give me just a little easier access to the battery. So let me do that and we'll be right back. All right, now with the tray out, you can see a little bit better where the battery retainer and where it hooks in to the body down here or into the bracket. So let's go ahead and take these off. Always disconnect the negative first. Now you've also got a 10 mil back here on the back, just like we had on the front. So it does help if you leave in the front rod to get the back one started so this doesn't slide all over the place while you're trying to loosen it. Alright, so now we can get this thing out of here.
This is our Optiplex yellow top. The stock battery is only 420. Uh, cold cranking amps, this one's 620. So it should do even better here in this temperate area in Ohio. Take that handle off. So that's in there now. So anybody that's wondering, there is a red top and the yellow top. Uh, I went with the yellow top because occasionally when we're on trips and stuff. I've got a bunch of extra accessories and stuff running. And so the yellow top does a little better than the red top for being drained and filled back up. It's called a deep cycle battery. And that's the only reason I went with the yellow top. I'll get these tightened up off camera so now we can remove these caps. I don't recommend removing those until after you have the battery in and secured so you can't accidentally touch anything. If you were installing this under the hood of a car, then I would tell you to also coat these with dielectric grease before you put the connectors on and to probably coat the connectors as well since this is inside of the car and it's behind a splash guard. I'm not too worried about putting the dielectric grease on it because it's not going to be exposed to anything anyway. Now if you have it, something else I always recommend using anytime you're replacing a battery is some battery terminal cleaner. And your good old scraping tool. And we'll just let this foam up for a minute. Let it start doing its job. And put this on here. Give it a couple turns. Switch out to the brush. Uh, 
Then we'll just come in with our shop towel. Now, especially when you're doing this, if you happen to actually see corrosion on any of this, then you definitely want to go ahead and do the dielectric grease step also. But none of the guys I know that have had these have had that issue. So now, put the connectors back on. Now you just want these tight enough that they're snug. If you go too far, you can't actually strip these and you don't want to do that. Because trust you me, these connectors are a pain in the butt. The last thing you want to do is strip them out and then need to buy new ones. And when you're done with the positive, put that cover back on it, just for safety's sake. So there's that, the new battery's in, and that's all there is to it. So pretty easy, get a little more, uh, I'll actually show you how to use the dielectric grease uh, here in the near future when I replace the truck battery. And stay tuned for the debut of our newest vehicle to the fleet, which is our truck. We're just gonna finish tightening these down Put the plate back in, carpet back in, and put the cover door back on. Uh, I don't think you'll find that too interesting considering you already watched the taking it out process. And so that's really all there is to change in the battery. And then of course, make a log in your owner's manual or wherever you keep track of your maintenance of when you replaced the battery. In this video, we installed the battery in the Evo back here. As you saw, wasn't anything complicated. The little battery retaining bars can be a little bit of a pain. Uh, other than that though, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. If you're still running the Panasonic that came in the Evo, I highly recommend getting rid of that piece of crap and throwing an Optum or anything is better than what came in it. So that's all for this video. If you found any of it helpful, useful in any way, shape, or form, feel free to hit that like down below and let us know. And also, don't forget, hit the subscribe and hit that little bell notification so that you can stay up to date on our latest videos. 
The Evo's not the only thing in our fleet. Thanks for coming. God bless you. Have a great day.